All right, guys, today we're in, we're in Park City. Uh, and it's like kind of chilly out here for being the end of August, early September. But uh, today we have a cool, cool box for you guys. Check it out. Well, we got Jesse here. Jesse, thank you so much for yeah for meeting up with me. Of course, man, that's huge. Yeah, gosh, and I've never seen a Cornwall box like this with with the hutch. I've never seen the design that goes up like that. Uh, this is their newer design. They just come out with a couple of years ago. Oh, sweet. No. But so Elite isn't this shop. This no, is... no. So Elite's my own business that okay. I started. Um, it's kind of a, something that I did um, also so I could. Uh, write off all my tools on taxes. So I buy all my tools through Jeez. my business. That's cool. And then I take the loss on the business side oh, and push. Okay. And because I do it as an S corp, I roll it over and write off the taxes. Whoa. So this is an actual key cutting machine? Yeah. What? It's just a CNC miller. So it's got like a, a tracing probe and then the cutter. So you um, can do like the all different kinds of keys? Yeah, like it's more for like high security keys. Like these oh, okay uh than it is for like these it's you can cut like the one-sided or the dual-sided uh -huh. um not a problem but uh it's a little harder it it's really slick when it cuts like inside track Whoa. like the volkswagen and that's kind of cool so yeah and so are you able to program them and stuff yeah once you get them yeah so I'll, I'll go through all that i oh, have okay. tons of programming awesome. stuff awesome. over here Man, this box is massive. Yeah, so it's, uh, what, 144 inches, I think, is what it measured out. It's 84 for the cab, and then, yeah, another 60 inches. How long have you had it? Uh, a year and a half. year and a half. Nice, yeah. not too long. I think it's gone on two years. Man. And so you work on, so we're in Park City, quite a few wealthy people yeah. around. You say you work on mostly European and, like, Land Rover-type vehicles? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, we do all makes, all models. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, we do a lot of European. Man, that's so, always, like... We're trying Porsche, to get more Ferrari, into exotics. Another Ferrari. Man. Crazy. Yeah. Man, so do you like this? Have you had a hutch design where it just kind of... Like, what's the benefit of having it, like... Um, I don't know. Like no, this that. is my first hutch. My last box didn't have a hutch. Huh. And then I decided I got the hutch because I started getting things like the computer oh, right. and like the soldering station and That's the key cool. cutter. And then I keep my like fridge. Nice. So is this like three pieces? No. But, so, I don't know. Yeah, it's, oh, it's two pieces. Yeah. Huh. So, That's neat. It comes down like that. And then I keep like my snow brooms for winter time up on top. Yeah. And these locks that you have on here, you're able to like key them all to like the same Yeah, they're all code. code. You oh. can change all the codes. That's cool. And you can put multiple codes in. So like if you want to have like another code for somebody else. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, huh. Is, is this uh, like meant for these, uh, like a top surface? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is kind of just a magnetic uh, protector to protect the top. Oh, wow. So, so it does just, this come for the box or do you have to cut No, you have to buy them and they oh, have okay. different, uh, it comes pre-cut. Oh, it does? Yeah, it comes pre-cut. That's kind of neat. But you, have, you can buy them in different designs and then... Uh, wow, where do you get that from? Just like the, the Cornwall guy. Oh, yeah. oh, it says Cornwall back in the corner. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, so Cornwall makes their own and then there's a company that does like all of their promotional materials that makes these. Oh, okay. Um, and these ones are a little better than the ones that Cornwall actually makes gotcha. and they have more designs. All right, that's cool. So, so what yeah. else do you have up here? I guess since we're already here. Yeah, that's right, we can start here. So like mostly I just have my computer, my key cutter, my soldering station and hard iron for when I do in modules and I have to take some chips off boards and stuff. Wow, so you actually take apart computer modules and yeah so oh, we'll geez. we'll either take them off so we can either like read the the EEPROM chips or if like a driver's bad um for like a coil or an injector um i have some spares wow. and we can do that or we can order one so yeah. you don't just replace the whole like module, module yeah yeah i mean it's been so hard after covid trying to get oh, modules okay. and back so we can go and get parts you know our used ones uh -huh. and i have some cloning stuff i'll show you in a little bit cool, like, yeah. 
where we can use used modules where other where like the manufacturers say you can't. Man, that's crazy. So that's, that's a, kind of thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut. No, you did. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool light. That's oh, like I love this light. Charging. This is like the only one I really use anymore. What? Um, so wireless charges. It's got it's got a light on the back which lights up, which I don't really use. I only use the side one side one or the All front right. one. But it's magnetic. Oh like, man. Yeah. And then it's also magnetic on the side. Does that battery last a little while? It lasts about four hours. Does it? Um, you can buy two of these, and they're really they're really not ex that expensive. Nice. They're really great thing. That's cool. So you can put both charging yeah. at the same time. That's cool. Yeah. Top door. It's mostly just sockets. Oh Jesus! It's filled up. Yeah. So. So what are these? Is this? Oh, so these are some actually these are some spline drive sockets oh, from Mako. And they're supposed to fit like already rounded. And I actually honestly haven't had very good success with them oh, yet. Really? So huh. I don't really use them. That's different. <laughs> Mostly what I use is a lot of quarter inch. Do you? Um, and I use, uh, you know, some three eighths. Yeah. So do you um, have. I don't use half. That's why I don't oh, have a lot of half. Um, I mean, other than taking wheels off. Yeah. So. Oh. Do you um, follow like a brand uh, closely or do you just kind no, of. No, no, they're all kinds of things so like these are matco uh this is all cornwall uh this is mac with some snap-on oh sweet um this is all snap-on oh man you got the whole yeah the whole world there yeah mids shorties yeah. and then the deeps these are the the ftx uh which is like for the rounded bolt ones okay. so these are super tight on oh. on stuff sometimes they're a little too tight are they so do you just jump for those right away or do you just when there's I usually the mid links most of the time. Gotcha. Are these all FTX? No. Oh, just the no, these are they're all snap on, but these okay. are the the FTX the ones okay. instead of their standard. They nice. have like this little I don't know. They're just different. Yeah. I don't know. They don't look much, I guess, but when you put them on something, they they grab they super look. tight. Awesome. So they got special sockets like this is for Mercedes ball joint nuts. Ball joint nuts? Yeah, so like on the front of the 166s, which is the like uh, SUVs, uh -huh. um, they have this big, huge nut. Is that holding it to the knuckle? or is it... Yeah. Oh, okay. And so this is to take it off. Huh. So. Yeah, so you can't do it without that? No, I, I'm guessing if you have a 12 point, but it's this one fits perfect. Oh, okay. I don't know. Snap on made it specifically for that. Oh, gotcha. And so we bought it just so that I had it. That's cool. Um, I don't use these much anymore because we don't see a lot of four-wheel drive. Oh, sure. And um, especially, like, this guy's for, like, a Ford F550. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we don't see any of those anymore. So oh, goodness. I don't use SAE almost hardly at all. Yeah. Um, just there's no cars that I use it on anymore. Gotcha. So did you work, uh, have you worked at other places? Yeah. So I used to work at a, a shop that did a lot more uh, trucks. Oh, did you? When I came here, we do mostly all European. Gotcha. And you just don't need that. Do you so. prefer working on European? Because I know a lot of people have like a bad taste in their mouth from European. <laughs> <laughs> I, it doesn't bother me at all. I work on everything. Nice. Um, I don't like to label myself as like a European technician. Right. <laughs> so, um, uh, but yeah, I work on everything. That's um, cool. Yeah. Now, what are so. those gold then? Like, uh, these are these are really cool. These are triple squares. They're made oh, by man. Mayhew, and they're they call them dual drives. Whoa. So you can put a quarter in the back, or it's like a, I think a thirteen or eleven. Oh, that's cool. Thirteen on the back. And then I have them in the torques too. Whoa. I got one that's that's broke. like so shallow. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. They're super super stubby. Um, you put the wrench on them, and they're even like you know. Yeah. Super low profile. Of course, we have a ton of torques, ball allens, inverted oh, yeah. torques. Jesus I mean, it's just like all the way back there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, sorry, I hide some of the <laughs> no, stuff that I don't good. use. So, like, these are five pointed. Five points. So, what? There's yeah. like four points there, too. Yeah, these are these are called more torque. What? Yeah, these ones. And there's only a few applications, like seats on some cars, uh -huh. um, some uh, bell housing bolts I found on some cars. And then, what about these? Uh, these ones I actually bought uh, for that car right there. No, the Ferrari. So uh, the Bosch mass airflows are held in by a five-pointed security. No way. And uh, if you buy the whole mass airflow from Ferrari, it's ridiculous, but you can buy just the sensor, and that's what takes oh, out the screw. Sweet. Like the Those are, these are head bolt sockets oh, head is bolts. what okay, they call them. Makes sense, yeah. 
Um, I got these just for Subaru. Gotcha. So this like is the, the head brakes? bolt, and then this is for the block bolts to split the block in half. Oh, wow. Okay. So they're 12s on the those. Oh, so nice. you can take the block apart and change the crank. Sweet. And then this is a Subaru uh, front caliber bolt socket nice. yeah. that they made specially to fit. Gotcha. Uh, these are fuel line because uh, you're supposed to torque all these new high pressure fuel lines. And so these oh. are to go over there and so you can torque them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I guess you couldn't do that with the wrench then. Yeah. No, you could, I guess, if you put a crow's foot on a oh, torque okay, wrench. Oh, yeah. But, but this one, that would kind of, technically that would kind of throw your torque off just a teeny bit. Huh. Because of the distance change. That's but interesting. He's like super angry right here. Oh, yeah. These are, these are for like getting lug nuts off. Um, oh, okay. So they're not actually, they got like teeth. Yeah. And so like, these are, I mostly use for when people lose their wheel locks. Oh, okay. They pound them on and nice. then twist off the, the wheel locks. Yeah. That's mostly that one. <laughs> um, next door down, there's my wrenches. So. Man. You yeah. Got a ton of wrenches in there. Yeah. Um, I mostly use the Matco uh, combos. Uh, but honestly, ever since I bought these, I don't really ever use anything else. This, if these don't fit, then I'll go to like standard wrenches but these are my go-to nice it looks like these have the same uh like these are yeah i they, i think they're all made in the, by the same people huh. so so are these just grab onto the like the fastener uh so the idea is like these are the splines supposedly so that like you can fit multi-fasteners oh uh, okay that makes so sense. like i've used these before on like a on a like a bigger torque like inverted torque set oh okay before you uh, know i got like the thin wrenches these are good for like when you're doing brakes and you, oh, yeah. you need to hold the inside pin. To right. You'd think they'd make that area just a little bit bigger. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's always like too small for a wrench. Yeah, it is. It's too small for a wrench. <laughs> and so that, I bought those. Yeah. Uh, this one was kind of cool. I picked this up at SEMA and this is by Lyle and it's uh, for doing uh, uh, actuator motors and like heating boxes. So like these are the common sizes that hold the actuators on. Okay. And you put them in here and then you can like ratchet but what? it's like a zero turn because the way it, it doesn't have any teeth it's like a i don't know what they call it huh. but it's like a zero turn like ability cam in there or something it, well yeah it's like got all these little rollers and so you stick these in here like this and then it's like zero there's what? like oh that's wild yeah, and you can like position it, and then you stick it in there, and you can sit and do this and take your screw wow, out. That so was... like when you're in a dash trying to get one of those yeah. little blower motors out. Oh, that would save so much time. Yeah. So. Huh. Good. You say you picked that up at SEMA? Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. And then I got uh, some line wrenches and stubbies, uh, more SAE that I I don't really use anymore. Gotcha. And then I got some like little things like these nut holders. What is it? So, like, we got this at SEMA, too. Like, they hand these out when you're walking around. And you slide it on one of these wrenches. Like, you knew one of them. Like this. And it will hold your nut. Oh, that's genius. You know? Huh. You put it on this end, too. Yeah. And it just clips onto your wrench. That's cool. But anyways, they, they got... I think Maco sells them now. Huh. But when we went, it was... They were just trying to get them... So you're walking around SEMA looking at the tools and they just hand them to you. Ah, oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, so the next door, this is my screwdriver door. Oh, geez. Yeah. I'm kind of missing one right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did you just lose it or is it somewhere? Yeah, I, I, oh, I'm thinking it's probably floating in a car somewhere. Oh, no. Uh, that's the worst. So are these just like the long? Yeah, these are long. Long and then standard. These oh, are no, the long ones. Um, I used to have the old set of these before they went to the Instinct handles. Oh, okay. And I... I lost one, and so I ended up buying the whole new set. Oh, you have to buy, buy another because <laughs> this was right when they came out with the Instinct. But oh, that was cool. that was a little while ago. But and then I got like radiator picks. Oh, these look pretty new, huh? Yeah, these are new. These are Torx, um, and I, I've been liking these a lot. That's actually. Cool. Do you like these handles? Yeah, these new Cornwell is... handles. Um, I I had some of the old Cornwell screwdrivers, and I did like them. Their wit was who was making them. Oh, okay. Um, but I really like these new ones better. They're kind of more like these. Huh. I love these. Uh, these are flexible. Oh, sweet, yeah. Uh, and they're in six and seven, which is all your European hose clamps. Oh, wow. So, so it's just a flip socket? Yeah. So oh, that's cool. One side six, one side seven. 
And so like for your hose clamps, um, that's pretty much all I use these for is just oh, hose wow. clamps. But yeah. yeah, it's flexible. And so like when you're taking off like the air cleaner mm -hmm. assembly or you know, all those. Yeah. Yeah, when the hose like yeah. you start and then I it got yeah. the American one, which is the five sixteenths and the quarter. Wow. So you got quarter and yeah. five sixteenths. That's cool. Oh, hands down the best trim tool you'll probably ever buy. Oh yeah. So like the aviation spoon. Yeah, and uh, Volkswagen has one in their tool catalog. Do they? That's identical. <laughs> well, I think Snap On makes it too yeah. because uh, they Snap On handles their tool. Oh, gotcha. Division, okay. but um, it's identical to the one that's in the Volkswagen catalog, and nice. it, I mean it's amazing. Nice. So. So, so going back, you said Volkswagen. Is it like something yeah. that comes in a car, or is it something? No, no, you buy for their tools. Them? So Volkswagen makes tools. No, no, no. So, so Snap-on handles their cataloging, uh -huh. but this is the tool that they recommend. So like if you're if you're oh, using like okay, gotcha. if you use like Otis and you're looking at like the uh, the recommended tools, oh, gotcha. it'll say use okay, okay, this tool gotcha. to pry out the. Yeah, okay. The that makes sense. Okay, sorry. I, I was yeah. Like, I was like, no. what? I didn't know they sold tools. No, I, they actually sold hot dogs at one time, but they just continued that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you used to be able to buy hot dogs that were packaged, and it literally said Volkswagen I on it. get some Volkswagen hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are strip screw extractors from Vampire. What? Yeah. So um, if you get, like, a stripped Phillips, they have, like, a, two different grades here. One's, like, super stripped and one's semi-stripped. And you put it in there, and then you can push down on this and like. Oh, whoa! So huh. they're like specially cut. Have you used those? Uh, I've used ones? them once, and they worked really well. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So it's a really cool product that Vamp Vampire makes, and it's it's just if you strip out a Phillips. Yeah. Oh, this one's really cool. Uh, this is made by Vessel. Vessel. And uh, this is an impacting screwdriver. What? So inside, there's like the mechanism. It does the same thing as the. I'll show you the other version. Like of it. a regular big, meaty one, like that. Yeah. So you grab this and you hit it, and it it, it twists. That it looks like a regular scooter. It does. That's it does. That's cool. But yeah, vessel out of uh, Japan. Um, huh. But it's an impact. You can kind of see like it, oh, yeah. it shows like if you hit it on the back, it'll twist. Yeah. Oh, so, that's wild. Uh, so I don't use my other one anymore. I use this one now for taking out the screws on like Hondas. So that's huh. cool. And then I have my my vessel uh, screwdriver, which I use mostly for taking like modules and stuff apart. What? So. Okay, this is so cool. What? That's yeah, it's like... an electric screwdriver bit. That's wild. And uh, it's really low torque, but uh -huh. you can you can manually use it, okay. but it's really low torque. So like when you're doing plastic, okay. you can run it up and it won't break or crack anything. So I That's use it so for cool. interiors too, because you can just run them in real quick and it's yeah. tight and not broke. <laughs> huh. And then I got like some, uh, these things are kind of cool too. All right, you just have a bunch of cool stuff here. This is number one Phillips, number two Phillips. Like when you're like right up against something or yeah, something? Yeah, when you have to like take something apart. These yeah. are Mayhew. That's cool. So, and then an RBRT set of bits. Oh yeah. So these are cool. I think I've seen these in one of your other videos yeah, those too. Definitely come in handy. So. All right. And then I got a bunch more trim tools. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, I bought these at SEMA. Okay. So these came from Mueller directly. Oh sweet. Yeah, that's nice. I like the green handles. That's cool. Yeah. So that's kind of their signature color. And yeah. then uh, these are O-ring picks. Oh sweet. So yeah. Little. Little spoons. Who makes those? Well, Mayhew. Uh, Mayhew. Huh. Yeah, Mayhew makes a lot of good stuff. Yeah, they they mostly make a lot of they make a lot of your tool truck stuff. It's just yeah. rebranded. Right. Um, just curious, what's that? This? Yeah. Oh, this is a snap-on set of minis. Oh, okay. So you got uh, Phillips, Torx, straights, and picks. Nice. That's so. a cool. I've never seen them in like a roll-up case like that uh yeah this is the older one it's actually kind of had it had a belt clip what <laughs> i don't know why you would put it on your belt but uh, that's cool. <laughs> you're ready to go you know uh, that's awesome. <laughs> i don't know what they i don't know who uh, snap on was thinking about that but that <laughs> one is this would be perfect on a belt yeah um uh this one oh this door this is mostly all engine and brake stuff okay Universal pulley holder, mostly used for like cams when we're torquing like cam gears or 
Okay. Is that just the one with like this? Yeah, it comes work in it. So. Oh, okay. You can change the, like, yeah. the dials out. Yeah, you can change them into different pins. Oh, cool. Got that one to do cams and stuff, and then I've got a serpentine belt toolkit. Huh. Now, this is a Ford Triton uh, spark plug repair kit. Oh, okay. So, I just hope you never have to use that guy. I had to do seven out of eight. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no that's one. terrible luck. So, I mean, it's been well used. Uh, for Did that. it work pretty good? Yeah, it works great. That's I mean, good. it's. They, they had those old spark plug problems. You don't see those engines very often, right. so it's not a big deal. And then I found out if if you get it, the engine hot and do them while they're hot, yeah. they come out better. You <laughs> so. know, I've, I've heard uh, you you get it really really hot just like that. Yeah. And you use an impact gun. Yeah. And yeah. Then that'll help. I, but see, somebody somebody's gonna do that, and it's gonna like ruin their motor. So don't do it. <laughs> it's just something I heard. Just. It works better when it's hot. <laughs> That's um, cool. This one was a, a balancer tool we picked up at SEMA again. Nice. Is this like a compression tester? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. my sample one compression nice. tester. And then I bought some extra hoses for it. It's kind of nice taking out of that massive blow mold. Yeah. It takes up a ton of space. So like some of the really new Asian cars use really small spark plugs. That's a cars? Yeah. What? Yeah. This one will fit, let's see, which size is this one? Is this the 10? This one will fit the Ferrari, actually. Oh my gosh. That's wild. <laughs> so, and then this is a coil puller for uh, Volkswagen. Oh, Slides over cool. the coil. And sh pull Does it just work for Volkswagen? I guess it yeah. probably just works. So it's, for it's yeah. designed gotcha. just for them. Huh. I think I have it real quick. I'll show you. Yeah, right here. So, this is the Volkswagen coil. Oh, yeah. They're usually pretty stuck on there. Is yeah, right? they're. Gotcha. Uh, so, you can just oh. and then rip them nice. right out. So. That's cool. Another SEMA fund. Okay. <laughs> So. Man, you must walk out of there with like a ton of tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, these are for uh, really annoying, like mostly PCV hoses huh. um, on the Euro cars. The, they kind of snap on and they hold. It's the ones where you have to squeeze them and then they like, when you squeeze them, they open up on the sides and then you pull off the hose. Oh, okay. These, you slide them on and twist them and then you, you can just pull in the hose. Oh, so you don't have to keep holding it. Yeah. That's neat. We got some tape measures. Uh, this one's metric. Um, Whoa. This is where you're doing European stuff, everything's in metric. Yeah. So I bought this one mostly for measuring rotors because huh. uh, everything's sense. in metric. So yeah. you just lay this on the rotor. And, that makes sense. I wonder, is like in other parts of the world, do they have that? Is it just sure. the US that has that? Well, yeah, I mean, other parts of the world don't use like inches. <laughs> yeah. Inches. So. <laughs> That's the only tape measure I've ever seen. So. Yeah, and I got, and I didn't spend a lot on that one. I got that one for free. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, some micrometers and a ruler. My refractometer for checking def fluid. So, on diesels, huh. checking the def fluid to make sure that there's not too much water. Okay. And then this scale is for the same thing. Um, I use it mostly for Mercedes, is there's a way to check the def system and you have to measure the output in grams. So you'll just take a little plastic container, zero the scale, uh -huh. put it under the def injector, run the test, and then put it on there and if it, it'll tell you how many grams and then you match it to what it's supposed to be. Oh, wow. And then I got like a bleeder kit for doing cylinders, some adjustment, an adjustment spoon and stuff, yes. and then brake flaring kit. Uh, this one's a Toyota emergency brake. Uh, so the shoes are like super hard to get uh, to because they're behind the axle flange. This goes through the axle flange and releases oh, them. Wow. So. Huh. Oh, and then I'm lo I love this. This is uh, a brake file. So like cleaning the rust out of like the brackets. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where the p p pad slides. Yeah. Yeah. And then this thing just takes the rust right off way better than even like a wire wheel does. Really? Huh. Yeah. Super. It's like a carbide file. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, this one. A little bit of everything in this one. So this is the. She makes one of this one. My wife makes one of it. She calls it the Grim Reaper. <laughs> That's um, what it looks like. Oh yeah, it's huge. So yeah, when we used to, when I used to work on trucks over where I lived, the uh, this one was really useful. But it's an indexing uh, extendable oh, wow. pry bar. Uh, this one's kind of cool. This is for the. They're a little bit older now. The Volkswagen's uh, plastic caps that go on the lug nuts, they had just a hole in them. So you go stick this in and it has a little ledge and it rips them off. What? And it's this long because you can stack the whole set. Oh, that's so cool. So all 20 caps will fit on here. 
Huh. And so you can just go around and pull all 20 caps off and have to store them on this while you're <laughs> doing, the, cool. doing the tires. And then when you get done, you can just go around and pull them off and put it back on. Huh. And then I got these smack oh, those are nice. chisels. Wow. Yeah, the big, big old grips. Yeah. Kind of hit your hand on it? Yeah, kind of <laughs> helped. Huh? Then I got some roll pin punches. This is kind of cool. This is a gasket pan separator. Oh, yeah. So, like, if you have, like, transmission pans, oil pans, diff covers, it's really kind of a sharp blade. Uh -huh. And so you can pound it in, and then you can just sit and hit this around the whole thing, and it cuts, like, the, the silicone gasket. Oh, okay. That's cool. See, I always just thought... Like you just put it in there and just like right away just crack try to like, no yeah but yeah it makes sense to try to cut it all the way around yeah that way you don't like deform your pan from trying to yeah pry it off oh that makes way more sense um oh the carbide scrapers that's what i've been Whoa, using those now. are huge oh, at least i don't oh man huh. that's cool who makes those uh this is vim oh vim okay but um uh, i i got these ones and then i wish i would have got the wild because they're about the exact same but a smaller handle oh okay but gotcha. other than these, but Vims are, they're not bad. Seal puller. That's a seal puller? I've never yeah. seen that before. So you can take, you take this guy or, and then whichever one of these, and then you can like stick them in here and then huh. you can pry your seal out. Wow. Um, I used to use them a lot when we did uh, bearing packs on trailers. Okay. So you'd stick this in the hub and pull up the seal out. That's nice. It's, and you have the other style too, or the yeah, other head? Yeah, a little head. smaller yeah. size. And then, oh, that's cool. And then I got uh, a little spring tools. Um, I use them for center punching. Uh, sometimes on these Europeans, they rivet the door panel, uh, the window regulator. Oh, okay. And these are, for those small rivets, you can just sit this chisel against it and like two or three pulls and it'll pop the rivet. Oh, no way. That's, yeah, that's nice. So they can yeah, like get like an air hammer out. <laughs> have a spring action to huh. it. Cool. Yeah, you don't have to do that or drill them or stuff like that. Uh, these are these are kind of cool. These are for yeah. wiring, and they're knives, and they cut the the tape and the loom. So like you can what? reach up a loom and like slide down. Oh there wow! And cut all the tape. Is that the same thing as this? Yeah, the it's same thing. Like these are just knife. different knives. And then I had one more, and that one's gone too. So I don't know where that oh, one. But huh. same thing, they're, what, they're for cutting like loom open or cutting wire. Huh. That's nice. And they're just, they're super sharp. Yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, this is my clamp tight kit. And I use this occasionally uh, in emergencies and stuff. If you don't have like a hose clamp, it's like a little tool and it makes a hose clamp. Yeah, so the guy that sells these said they had them tested and it held 2,600 PSI on a hydraulic line. No kidding. So, yeah, wow. it's really, really cool, and That's they neat. give you some extra wire. Huh. I don't know. If I, I know that one right there. Oh. Ah, it's all right. It's okay. I think this one has it. If I can pull it back. Oh yeah. So. Wow. And that's been holding for six months now. No way. Yeah. Huh. Can you can you set the tension on it? Like yeah, you you just twist it, and then when you get, you feel like you got the right tension, you fold it over. Whoa. And then cut it. That's cool. Um, I also got it because every once in a while we get a classic car in here, and I've done a whole classic car with those as the hose clamps. And really? the guy really loved it because it looked more like a traditional. Sure. Because it was like a '30s. Oh okay. And so it looked more like a. He didn't want the the worm clamps. Right. Yeah. And so he, I was like, well, I can try this. And I did that and it still huh. holding. So oh, this one is mostly, mostly stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> so I got hammers. Um, these are big tap die sets. Oh, okay. So like this one's, I think the big set. So, oh, like they're actually big. Yeah. This, I was thinking like, they're just like a like no. little pieces. These are metric 24. Whoa. So this is the big metric set, and then that's the small metric set. So you could do like an axle or something? Okay. Yeah, yeah, probably. Huh, um, cool. I've used them a lot uh, on uh, brake caliber bolts and stuff for some oh, of the bigger, okay. bigger things. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is for doing wheel bearings on either the Dodge truck, and then this is for the Ford truck. And you, you wedge it between the uh, knuckle and the bearing. 
Okay. And then you use the power steering to pop the bearing out. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's so, cool. So what is the other piece for? So this is to adapt it for the Ford because the Ford's a stud. Oh, gotcha. And okay. so this is kind of like a plastic, so it protects the oh, threads. Cool. And so it tries to push right on the center of the stud. And then okay. if the threads hit it, it doesn't gotcha. ruin them. Um, these are kind of cool. These are uh, from AST. These are, you put these on like ball joints and then you can use your air hammer to pop them out loose. Like this one's for a Tesla Model 3 axles. Oh, so wow. you put this on the axle. It also works on Nissan, which is weird. Huh. So Nissan and Model 3s have the same thread. That's a massive bolt. Yeah, so you just thread it on, yeah. and then you take your air hammer and... Wow. That is genius. Yep. Yeah. Uh, these are fuel tank cap. So the plastic caps that hold the fuel pumps oh, okay. in the tank. So you can uh, oh, wow. adjust it on and then twist it off. Oh, that's cool. So this grabs those huh. teeth that are usually on them, like Mercedes, has those, uh, several other brands. That's, you, I, I've seen them where they're, oh, they're like this. Yeah, that's, same as that one. That's like... That one will work too. That's what I used to use. Uh -huh. But that would slip off a lot because they're super tight. Huh. And this one just grabs so much better. Yeah, that's cool. And then most of this is all just drills, taps. And then, oh, these are kind of for like rounded nuts supposedly and you just slide them on and then you use a wrench twist them out what? yeah That's there's cool. they got like little teeth in them huh. um so i've that... tried to use one and it broke so i don't oh. know how well they work yet <laughs> huh. but it was kind of i i knew, figured it was an impossible task gotcha. but huh. this was really cool oh, I don't know if I, seen that. i'm sure it's gonna be cool because everything in here is so cool so this is a <laughs> this is a threader a re-threader and you can see like on like a stud so these just twist down and they have carbide teeth, right? Oh, okay, yeah. And then you just twist them off. And so you, they only work on things where you can get behind oh, where the damage gotcha. stud is. Sure, yeah. But you can twist them off. I use them on CV axles all the time, like this guy. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, this is the mini snap-on puller kit. And I wanted one for a long time, so I finally bought one. And then uh, they came out with a cheaper one that's made in Taiwan or something oh, now, gotcha. but, but this is the snap on one. Damn. So this thing's sweet for taking out I don't know, just anything that you need a puller. Nice. Um, I use it a lot on uh, like little sills, bushings. So like this oh, is yeah. like a, you s can stick it in and then when you tighten it, it'll push oh, it yeah. out. Wait, you can tighten it? Oh, yeah, so tighten you, the, okay. I yeah, see, gotcha. so it's got teeth in there. So as the gotcha. end goes in it and oh, pushes, okay. it pushes these out like that. Yeah. Um, oh, this is the thing that I was telling you about the vessel screwdriver replaces. So like this one you can use in your air hammer and then you put a wrench on it and then it twists out. Uh -huh. Or you have like the more traditional. Like impact, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's amazing. that screwdriver does the same thing as this. Oh, that's amazing. So. Huh. And then this is a stamping set. Oh, that's nice. So if I'm doing like an engine yeah. and I need to mark like the the caps yeah i can mark them with numbers or letters or whatever I, yeah and this is from that spring tool so you don't have to have a hammer you just pull that back. oh wow that's cool yeah you just pull huh. that back and let it go and yeah it'll nice. mark it for you that's that tool and then this door is kind of just a drawer <laughs> the whole Man. stuff i've done like a tour on these boxes um before and just like yeah. the size of this drawer yeah is i'm like just massive I, I don't know what I really use it for. So like the big box underneath there is a port of power. And so it's like the hydraulic pump with like different things for the, mostly used for body work. I use it for getting like dually wheels off. Oh, that's smart. So yeah. like they have a little hydraulic ram and you can shove it between like the leaf spring and the wheel and uh -huh. pump it up and it pushes off yeah. the wheel. Oh, that'd be like violent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like I have these and I've never used them. And so they're kind of just chilling down there. Are these the Torx balls? These are poly dry. Oh, these are poly dry, huh. And I, I bought them because uh, for a head job and then we ended up not doing the head job. Hmm. Um, that's what that door holds. And then like my bags when I need to go like do stuff. Cool. So, and then this is my ratchet extension drawer. Nice. So. So is this, are these torque wrenches here then? Yeah. So like, is this my half, my three eighths and my quarter? Yeah, that's a cool quarter. Yeah. So this is the new Cornwell one and I'm trying it out. See, 
Um, I used to have the Maco one. Oh, okay. And, uh, it ate through batteries a lot. Oh, so I'm it? trying this one. Huh. So, that's nice. yeah, that's why the batteries aren't in. Because this one, the big Matco, I don't know why I it eats batteries. Oh, does it? Huh. Like, if I leave the batteries in it, one week it's dead. So, what? Yeah. Huh. Wow. So. Man, that's just so cool. Like, is it like an aluminum? Yeah, part? yeah, it's wow. aluminum. That's uh, crazy. It's kind of cool because it'll do, it does the vibrate, the lights. Does it do angle? Yeah, it does angle. What? Um, that's crazy. You know, and it's it does inch pounds, so it's like... Uh, it does what one through 25 foot pounds i think is all oh, it does okay. that's quite so. a bit for a quarter yeah which is all i need it for because yeah i mean like 10 newton meters is what i'm mostly using it for gotcha so nice. and then these this is snap on uh is that the tech angle yeah this is the early tech angle oh, okay and this one actually has been adapted so the cap that used to be on this it, it would pop off all the time oh okay and so this is I sent it in for repair, and they adapted the newer technical end on it. Nice. So this isn't the end, the end that come on it. They oh, okay. actually, nice. that's how long I've had it. But yeah, this is the early tech angle wrench. Oh. Then I got my old torque meter um, I use for bearing preloads. Oh. So yep. when I'm doing a diff setup, yep. you can measure your preload. Gotcha. That looks like an old one, huh? Yeah. That's cool. It is a really old one, but uh, I just sent it in and had it calibrated on the oh, March of last year so sweet that's cool they'll still fix them that's cool. <laughs> so that's kind of cool yeah assortment of ratchets here yeah so i have um the two half inches or snap on okay do you I, have like a go-to ratchet that uh, it's probably my green pair of snap-ons oh yeah the fled and the oh yeah so nice i had the matching quarter huh. and then um so do you like it not having a lock on the on the ratchet head yeah, I'm mostly. Um, I did buy the uh, the Matco because of the lock, but I didn't like the length of this one. Oh, uh, it's kind of long, huh? It's the 18 inch one, huh. which a lot of people like. I just like this length better. Gotcha. Huh. I'm starting to go back. I kind of like the hard handles. Uh, better. I love hard handles. I think that's like my new thing. I think as you get older, you uh -huh. get over you get over these. And yeah, kind of yeah. want the hard handle. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's more like a nostalgic look on there. Yeah, so cool. I love the hard handle. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. So that's why I got the two hard handles. Cool. And then I have this guy, which was a, started as a quarter, is now three eighths. Oh, that's cool. So has a three eighths head on it. Yeah. Huh. Did, so does the Snap On truck do that for you? Or yeah, you, yeah, huh? you can buy it. They make oh. it the the thing. That's I cool. also have somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, I have the thing because one of these is going to be. Oh, right here. I'm going to make one of these into a quarter drive. Oh, that's. Those are tiny. Are these Snap On? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I'm gonna make one of these a quarter drive. That'll be handy. And then I I got this guy just because it's the hundredth anniversary. Oh, nice head. Yeah. So cool. Uh, let's see. This is my plier. Oh man, you got a yeah. large assortment here. Yeah, a lot of ice grips, uh, spark plug wire, tool. Oh, these are some really cool scissors. Oh wow. They cut through electrical wire too. Oh, do they? Yeah. Who makes those look like a vampire? Right? So these are, but engineer is who makes these. Huh. So if you go on and find these, you can just Google engineer uh -huh. and they come from Japan and oh, no they're great tools. Huh. They look sharp. Oh, they're super good. Huh. But yeah, the vampire stuff is all made by engineer. A lot of little like weird specialty stuff. Um, like this is a light bulb puller. A light bulb puller? Yeah. So is this like not, huh? So it's got like a little rubber grips in there. So yeah. like if you need to pull out a light bulb. What? But it's a, it's a, it's a couple of times where those little like 194s. You, oh, yeah. You can't and you're like, like, this is going to break in my hand. Yeah, so you got this <laughs> and you can like actually pull them out. Wow. Or if they're hot. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's heavy. Helpful. And then Nipex. Oh, these are tiny. Look at those. Yeah, all the Nipex. These are the the Cobras and, oh. the, and then the pliers. Wrench. Oh, you got the pliers. They're like, yeah. like little babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have the the whole set of Cobras. Oh, yeah. And I have the big, the oh, big Cobra back there. 22 inches back there. And then I have the bigger pliers. Right? Nice. So, and then this one's for uh, doing this same as that. It grabs what? the... What? Yeah. So like if you've cool. got to go up over top of a tank and release a fuel line. And you just squeeze the... Squeeze oh, the that's cool. Yeah. That'd be neat, like on top of a gas tank. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you can go up over the exhaust tank and grab that. Huh. 
then I got a, I got a hood. What? So this is just for like the hood struts. Right. You can just grab oh, them. That's neat. And I wish you guys just use like those. But that would... Yeah. So this is a aluminum. Won't, oh yeah. Won't damage the thing. So that one's out there. Um, a power door. Yeah. Again, like the the amount of space. Like usually the power door is like real yeah. like thin and shallow, and yeah, you got a ton of space in here. Yep. Yep. So I got uh, I got some cool ones. I like the snap-on lawn handle oh, that's nice i like the grip and the button yeah instead of the the like wedge thing like this oh sure yeah, yeah. so i like to have a button huh um and then i've been trying the dewalt lately um i really like the battery hmm. on this one that's nice and it's brushless so yeah i've been trying this one yeah it seems quiet really like it yeah and they got a polisher and a drill cutter and a smaller cutter uh, and then the impact one Oh, this one's cool. great. I love this one for engine work uh, when I'm doing like water pumps and stuff. Oh yeah, so that's nice. Does it have quite a bit of torque? Yeah, it does. does it, it? It, I originally got it for brakes, and a lot of people I see use them for brakes, but I can never get it to break loose on anything. Seems like a caliper bolt would be pretty tight. And the bad thing <laughs> is, is they didn't make it to where you can, like, you can't push on it to like break it oh, loose. Oh, gotcha. So, huh? Yeah. So this way is. Then I'm like I said, I'm trying the Dewalt. This is what I used to use, and then I've been using the Dewalt. Nice. With the quarter drive, um, and then I'm loving this guy. This is the quarter, the three eight. Sorry, uh, twelve volt. Yeah, the stubby. Yep. Those are so nice. They have like the perfect amount of torque on those. They guys. are. That's why I love it. And then I went down because I got tired of carrying the big gun around. Oh, okay. And this guy will zip wheels on and off just fine. Nice. And so I kind of went with the the compact and then i've got the big three quarter i ordered okay uh finally so i've got the three quarter milwaukee coming to oh, replace sweet. the the half inch nice. high big torque guy man that other one's so heavy and you have to carry around and this one zips off lug nuts with no problem that's awesome so and if i have any problems i do switch to the air gun okay the air gun always rips it off so got the air cap yeah, this guy, I mean, most of the people in the shop want this guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird because it works different than a lot of the others. It like, the longer you hold it, the like more torque it builds. Really? It's supposedly got a ratcheting mechanism in it. What? So huh. they used to make the same gun for Mac in the Mac name. Okay. And that's where I originally seen it. And then they stopped making it. So I bought the air, the air cat one. Huh. Um, and then I got this. Little Cornwell 3.8, or sorry, half. I originally got this to do uh, crank bolts on Subarus. Oh, you, okay, yeah. Then I've got a bunch of just grinders and an air blower. Yeah. Does that hammer hit pretty hard? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Like, we don't we don't see a ton of like heavy stuff. So like I said, the trucks. So it works really great for everything I use it for. That's cool. Um, I use it a lot with these guys, um, which are kind of cool. You can replace the heads on them. Um, what? But this is aluminum. So that you can use it on, and it doesn't like marsh stuff up. Whoa! So I got it come with aluminum, the brass, or the uh, plastic. Huh? So you can use them on different things. So <laughs> the old hammer. Yeah. <laughs> so not a lot of people have that. This thing was so expensive when it came out; it was ridiculous. <laughs> but it was like awesome. So yeah, yeah. People bought it. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Bottom for sure. Um, so that's got my. My ball joint set, okay. my, my nine way slide hammer, my spindle puller for four wheel drives and stuff, a Subaru ball joint. Nice. Remover. Yeah. So, so you have a lot of uh, Subaru stuff. Did you ever work at Subaru? No. No. No, we just mountain town. Oh, yeah. Ski town. Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. You know, that's like the <laughs> official car of a uh, skier. Gotcha. So. Um, and then I got my vacuums and then some AC tools. Nice. So I got like a die kit and. Just some miscellaneous AC stuff. Nice. Does that vacuum do pretty good? Uh, this one, not that. so much. The the air one, way better. Oh, the air one. Okay. So, oh, but cool. that one came in a kit, and so I, I oh, kept it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So then there's the side cap, my battery jumper, my drill doctor for sharpening bits. That uh, uh, jumper looks tiny. Is that like a yeah. like a lithium? Or no, it's not. It's, it's a regular. Not. Which is the reason I keep this one around because if you have a bad alternator, uh -huh. I can hook this up and drive the car in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, over here, oh, my my silicone gun. Oh, that's cool. 
So when I do like pans and stuff and I have to do silicone and I lay it out. That's like a game changer for sure. Doing like one big timing cover. Like, yeah. It's like, that's worth it. Yeah, that's why I got it. Cause it's like, oh man, that's cool. Ah, uh, there's my locker. This is the one that has most. <laughs> wow. So, and then these are the, for my funnel, these are the adapters. And so they fit all of the oil caps. Yeah. That's cool how they put this, uh, this in here so you can hang stuff. Yeah. Huh. There's my funnel that sticks in there. Nice. My sure shot. Oh, this is my, the other lane tool. This is my fuel kit. So for doing fuel cleanings. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. So does this hook up to like, where's, how does this work? So you just set an air hose on. And okay. then this right now I have a fuel kit that I can, uh, has all the adapters, uh -huh. but this is just a sprayer nozzle. Huh. So, um, this just goes in your intake huh. and the you just, body just, yeah. And it just sprays against the throttle body. Oh, okay. This is a diesel Volkswagen injector kit. So if you have to do TDI fuel injectors. Oh yeah. So. Is that like a small slide hammer? Kind of? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so <laughs> sometimes this won't even take them out. I don't know if you, <laughs> you ever Google some of the videos of diesel fuel injectors and they're like hanging the car by the injector. <laughs> this is a cam sill kit. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what does that do? So this installs your, your cam sills. Oh. So you, you pick the right adapters and then this this is the size of the sill huh. or you pick the one, whatever one matches the size of the sill. And then you just tighten the, the bolt on the end of the cam and it pushes your sill. Oh, out. whoa. Oh, so that's nice. these are all the different sizes for the different bolt sizes. Okay. So you pick, say like if it's a 14 mil and then that goes into uh, okay. that. Yeah. And then you huh. tighten it. Nice and straight in there. Yeah, so That's you get cool. your perfect sill. And then this is the remover. So like you feed this behind the sill uh -huh. and then it goes like this uh, Okay. and on each side and then this pushes against the center. That'd be a nice kit to have. Huh. So, um, and then these are just all kinds of tools that are in boxes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a BMW fuel injector kit. Is it to remove? Yep, remove and install. Uh, power steering pulley kit, master fuel injector kit, uh, just dial indicator magnetic. Oh, yeah. That's I use nice that one. for mostly for setting up my gear sets. Okay. Uh, oil filter cups. Oh, fan clutch tool. Oh, yeah. Um, this is really cool. This is for smoking cars for the EVAP. Okay. These are all EVAP adapters. Whoa, that's cool. So you take them off, like usually at the purge valve. Uh huh. And so you just pop off the purge line and the purge line will go back on uh, the back side. What? This snaps on the front and then your smoke goes in there. So you could still have the complete setup. Yeah. Oh, that's genius. Or you just, if you want to just pop the line right off at the purge and then pop this in. Yeah. And you can smoke right in the back. Huh. It works great with my little smoke machine, so. That's cool. That's what that is. Um, these are brake fluid caps for my brake flusher. The case, oh, okay. the case kind of broke, but I love this kit from Snap-on because of this cap. This is for the Toyotas, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of them, if you see them, they just have a rubber cap that snaps over. Uh, and the other brake flush machines always want to run this like chain thing around the master and like tighten it down. This just goes right in there and clamps around. Wow. So. It was genius huh. when it came out. Yeah. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. This is just accessories for my smoke machine. Okay. Uh, my coolant. This is my coolant system refiller. Oh, yeah. Right. And then uh, my power probe. And so these drawers are like, you can yeah. adjust how tall they go. Yeah. So this was actually the Cornwall guy that recommended that I put them this way huh. instead of using them as drawers so that you can just put the cases and yeah. them out. So that's just how I've every, always oh. used them. That's cool. So uh, this is a Craftsman. Oh, this is old. This is kind of cool. It's a pass-through set. Oh, that's cool. So all the sockets snap in and then yeah. they're, they're passed through. Huh. This is my master fuel kit. So this is, has all the other adapters so I can use that for oh, like okay. fuel rail. Cornwell, huh? Yeah. Oh, geez, yeah. 
So, huh. um, they don't make this. Uh, it's made by a company. It's a U.S. made company. I don't remember who it is. That's why I bought this one over the Maca one. Oh. Is because this one was made in the U.S. and it has all of the brass fittings where the other one was using like plastic. Oh wow. Jeez. Yeah. That's a solid set. Yeah, it's it's pretty sweet set. So this is a just a vacuum gauge. Okay. Basically the same thing that was in there. Uh -huh. um, just with a hose on it. Um, timing light. Uh oh, this is really cool. I use this for making gaskets. Whoa. So you can make perfect tools. Yeah. So you take this and we'll put it on the bench. I have a rubber mat under here that I use. Uh -huh. And you unroll the gasket material on the rubber mat. And then you just smack this with Whoa. a hammer and it will cut a perfect, huh. perfect circle. That's nice. That's another, that was another SEMA find. Is it? <laughs> uh, oh, this is another vacuum tester kit. Oh yeah, Mighty Vac. Sweet. Yep. Oh, this is my transmission adapter kit and my drill pump so for filling these new transmissions they're really hard oh, that's and cool. so like these are all the adapters and then you use i use it with the drill pump which is this guy and you just put your drill in here and oh yeah pump your fluid that's cool does that work pretty good with like uh, like higher viscous mm, oils to a point oh. yeah it'll do gear oil the one thing that i know it won't do is because we all have the same kit here in the shop. Mm -hmm. Other guy, my other tech, tried to use it with uh, Lucas additive. Uh -huh. Didn't work. <laughs> but that stuff's like <laughs> yeah. honey. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, not didn't work on that. But they did warranty it, so that was. Good. Oh, there you go. Oh, this is my master cooler adapter to. It. Oh wow, well, yeah, that's but a solid set. I've added a bunch to it. Really? So like, this is Tesla Model Three. Oh wow. Right there. I didn't um, know they had a radiator. Oh, uh, they do. Yeah, they have a ton of coolant. Oh, because the battery the pack. Batteries. Okay. Yeah, and the drive I just, units. I have no idea what I'm talking about. No, you're good. The batteries. drive units are cool, water cooled. The, the, the pack, the heater, like just everything. Wow. Huh. Uh, this is another one I've added into the kit. This is a the BMW for the turbos cooling system. Huh. Because they run a separate cooling system for the turbos. What? Yeah. So there's, they're completely separate from... The engine, yeah. What? That's yeah. wild. The only ones I really didn't buy, I think, that is the Duramax ones that are left-handed thread. Oh. Uh, bottom drawer. Uh, blankets I use for like covering the cars. Some more fender covers. My cool. printer in here. Um, I have a bunch of training manuals. Uh, this is my uh, programmer. Uh, for my, my battery maintainer for when I do programming. Oh, okay. So it's a hundred amp supply, co constant power. Um, so this is what I use when I need to do programming. You a need lot. to have like really super stable voltage when you program. Oh, and okay. like a lot of manufacturers will specify, but like most of the time it's like 13.8 or 14.2 on euros. Huh. And so this will hold that voltage perfect. Whoa. up to 100 amps no way. Huh. and so uh, you plug this on when you do the programming huh. and stuff yeah, or else, I never would have known that huh. yeah so you have to have really really stable voltage because the way it writes is can signals and that's by voltage and oh, so if you have sense. your voltage dropping it yeah. causes issues huh. this is part of my key programming stuff so these are all for different keys so like this one right here is an ews adapter for programming on older BMWs. So where do you put those? Uh, so these are all adapters and you have to use them with other things, but like for instance, so you take the EWS module out of the car, which is the security module. Okay. And then it'll plug in here and then you'll solder this on the board. Oh, and then geez. that's what allows it to read the chip huh. that holds the key data. And then you can write the new key to the chip. Wow, so that's kind of like an involved process to- Yeah to do all that yeah so this is part of the EEPROM work and then some of these are for like clearing keys that have been programmed so they can be reprogrammed okay um they're all different adapters so when you're using the machine it'll tell you to use you know which adapter oh, okay. that you need um i got my smoke machine in here my little oh yeah that's a nice one this one's uh the company that makes these actually makes really cool ones and they usually have like a cool 
like monster looking oh, thing really? on them because <laughs> they, they cut they're like the, the i think their like name brand one was called the smoke monster oh, okay and then i got this guy uh fuses and relays oh, wow. so um this is all from like when i do a fuse box or something i pull all the fuses out oh, yeah. um because sometimes there's like waiting for a fuse is annoying uh -huh. <laughs> when you have to wait for a part store to deliver yeah. like, something and i can just put one in so oh, yeah, you know i got miscellaneous relays j box fuses nice. so that's just a fuse assortment my known good door <laughs> oh man yeah so it has a little bit of everything in it window regulators a subaru coil so why do you have so many coils it's uh, I've just kept them around, like but, either when we've done engine replacements oh, and okay. stuff like that, gotcha. or uh, you know, or we've set, we've done a set of coils, but not all of them are bad. Oh, sure, yeah, so, yeah. It's nice to have known good stuff. It's yeah. Um, there's some some high voltage stuff. So there's my high voltage gloves and some high voltage screwdrivers. Those look cool. So, yeah. So we uh, is a German company. They're rated for thousand volts. Is this for like working on hybrids? Yeah, and hybrids okay. and electrics and nice. so. And then here's some more, just some more miscellaneous, just parts and stuff. This is a Audi to get it in neutral if the bat if it won't start. What? So there's a, like a spot in the floor where the carpet sticks up and you stick this down and turn it and it releases the transmission. What? That's cool. So, cause all these new cars that don't have like actual shifters that are attached to the transmission that uh, are electronic yeah and this is huh that's stuff you don't think about like, yeah you don't have any power and you're like kind of screwed. yeah then i got some chemicals just for cleaning up if yeah fingerprints or get some dirt in the leather yeah a little bit of air freshener chemical so. guys yeah can't go wrong no no they're great priced they're easy to get you know yeah and it's good product this stuff is amazing what is it the invisible super cleaner huh. i mean it cleans stuff up so with grease like amazing oh really so like i usually just use this like when i've done like a bunch of interior work or stuff like that yeah clean off the dash real fast nice. um it the reason i like this over some of the other dash cleaners is it doesn't leave like any shine or so so it's just more neutral yeah. so in case people don't like the shiny dash sure or, yeah this stuff is amazing for the carpet oh yeah yeah just amazing yeah so so um this is my battery charger so oh that's a big one yeah i bought this one because it's got uh, support for lithium ion oh okay which is a lot of the new mercedes and porsches um huh so this one supports the lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries. so like instead of actual like a lead acid to start the car they have yeah so uh huh. the porsches and the mercedes I know for sure they they use lithium iron phosphate really and then we're getting a lot of people that come in in sprinters that have camper conversions that are using lithium ion phosphate. and then i just keep my little my battery tester oh, right yeah. here cool ready to go transmission filler oh, okay another version of it brake flusher this is what that goes with those caps oh okay so you just stick your air hose on you put the cap on open it up and you pressure bleed the that's cool system this is a awesome one from mighty vac and this is a pressure or a suction what and this one will push through that uh lucas really yes because awesome. it's just all air pressure so there's like a little stick that goes down here oh, wow. and so it just pushes air from the top and pushes huh. it out that's awesome so and then i've got uh my extra modules that i keep around oh wow like i've stolen a, a motor off this and then i have a, a bcm down here and i've stolen parts off of this one i, I don't know what i'm gonna do with this one it's probably gonna go keep it for parts gotcha so it's got a back chip on it it's kind of wild uh, that you actually desolder yeah. uh, things off the boards and everything because typically guys will just you know they'll order up a new but like you're saying during COVID, that's yeah, during COVID, we couldn't get anything. And you're telling someone, hey, it's six months before you can drive your car again. Oh, man. You know, wasn't very nice. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of what they're there. And it offers us, we can offer a little bit different abilities than the dealer can. Because yeah. sometimes the dealer will say no. Right. 
and we can say, yeah, we can fix that. Um, and then this is my diagnostic cart. Oh man, this is okay. a nice cart too. So is, have you had this longer than the? Yeah, the, yeah, this is really old. Yeah. Um, Looks nice though. But yeah, this is my where I keep all my diagnostic equipment. Basically, um, I got Jeez. my my Ultra. That's a huge screen. Yeah, massive. Yeah, this is the Autel Ultra. Uh, this is the IM508, so it's my main key programmer. Okay. Um, it also does some security functions. Huh. Uh, it'll also do uh, just your service resets, too, if you need to. Oh, okay. So, nice. um, my X tool, um, this one's a good scan tool. It kind of uses, I think, launch software, so okay. it's kind of similar to launch. But I also use this because it has the uh, key programming software in it, too, okay. from... Uh, the auto pro pad. So this is another key programmer. Nice. Um, and then I have my Apollo. Goodness. Um, this one's really good for GM, just everything basically domestic. It's huh. really good on. Wow. Uh, so I use this a lot. Uh, secure gateway for the Chryslers. I have it on both, but this one is fast. So. What's secure gateway? So uh, after 2018, uh, Chrysler found that their cars could be hacked um through like the radio oh and so they put in what's called the secure gateway module and so to do anything like bi-directional controls or uh clear check engine lights or to clear anything basically or even reset the oil light has to go through the secure gateway oh, module wow. and so to access it you have to have uh you have to pay uh, for a subscription it's like 50 bucks a year oh. and then uh they authenticate through the Chrysler server. Wow, so, I never knew that. Yeah, so what it does is it sends a request to the Chrysler server to get the code to basically allow you to unlock the gateway. Wow, so what happens if somebody hacks into like a rate, like what, what could they do? So there's a couple of videos online and they showed it. There are some hackers that like, that kind of did a display video on a thing, but they hacked in and they were able to like stop the car. What? Um, unlock the doors, like just. No way. Yeah, so like, Wow. It was kind of a big issue, and Chrysler kind of went to the max. And but secure gateways are getting more popular. Oh, um, really? So like Ford's coming out with them, Subaru's coming out with them. Huh. Um, there's different ways around them. Like Volkswagen sort of has one, um, but the way to like to bypass it is just open the hood. Huh. So they kind of were the smarter ones, and yeah. they're like, well, if the hood's open, we, <laughs> right. we figure it's okay. You're working on the car. Right. This is my dongle for my other key programmer. This is another key programmer. Oh, wow. uh, this one also you, you can use to do some key testing. Huh. So like if you have a question like, is my key working? Yeah. It'll pick up. Um, but I also, cause I don't use that all the time. I use this with my ultra. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't have to use the big, the big box. So this is the bigger box that has my, it has the scope oh, module okay. built in it. Yeah. So is that the only difference between this and that? Is that has the basically scope? the scope module and the waveform generator. Is this um, this is also doubles as a uh, J box, so oh, for okay. programming cars. Okay. So is this faster using, than using the blue? Yeah, screen? this one's just easier and faster. Gotcha. So I use this one for diagnostics, and then if you need to program, uh, you can hook this up to a laptop to program. Gotcha. Um, or Autels does some support for like BMW oh. and Mercedes programming. Oh. Right. So so this so this is for key programming this yeah. is for uh this one has both both and then this is just scanner just scanner What's this one just is basically a scanner just a scanner. um is there a reason you have the apollo and the yeah they they just work certain ones work better okay so for instance like uh early gm you can't read transfer case codes with the with the hotel and uh you can with the apollo gotcha so it's so. like some things you can do on this and vice versa yeah okay. and it has a little bit i think i like the graphing better on the apollo so mm -hmm. for, for certain things it's easier um but it, it's hard to fix all models and have one tool gotcha yeah that makes sense it's just certain ones do better on certain cars um this is my drawer of attachments so this is all for the scopes clamps back probes uh, these are for connectors so you can take a connector apart and then plug it in line. And then this is where your scope would plug on. Oh, nice. So everything's still hooked up. Yeah. Yeah, that's So cool. you can do do testing. Um, my camera, uh, my meter. Oh, yeah. Uh, is this like a, like the one that you can like Bluetooth to your yes. phone? Yeah. 
Oh, it's kind of cool. Oh, wow. And it has some graphing capabilities. That's cool. Yeah, that is, it's really cool. So have you used it, it with your phone much? Yeah, I use it a lot, actually, with my phone. Huh. Um, it's really nice, especially like if you're testing farther away. Oh, okay. Because I might have like my wire, this hooked up, uh -huh. and then I'm like in the back of the car. Right. And instead of trying to move the meter to the back of the car, I can just sit under there with my phone. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Is this uh, screen pretty pretty decent? For it is. It, it is pretty decent. The, the, it's okay. I, I, I kind of seen some others that I really like um, that have articulating cameras, and that's yeah, kind of my next like move and stuff. That's, cool. that's kind of my next purchase, but this one has dual. It has one on the side oh, and nice. one on the tip. Yeah. So I got my, my flare infrared. What? What is it? The uh, like infrared. Uh, That's wild. Usually they're like a gun. Yeah. They look like a yeah. Yeah. This one. This one's just like a little pocket one. Whoa. So I don't even know if this is really automotively purposed. It. I think a lot of people buy these for like home inspections. Okay. Yeah. So, but that one's a flare, yeah. low amp probe for nice. my my scope, and then this is another amp probe. TPMS tool. So this yeah. one's kind of cool because it's limited edition one is so that for resetting the tire pressure yeah, yeah programming sensors, sensors. Yeah. but this one came in blue oh that's cool so nice <laughs> and then it has the obd code so if you have to write like the sensors oh gotcha yeah just a basic light always use the incandescents because oh, they sure. actually simulate a load yeah versus yeah. the leds uh, another soldering kit and then these are more the terminals oh yeah so just another set of those nice uh my tweezers for when I'm pulling chips. Uh, okay. So yeah. I use these to grab the chip and pull them all. That's pretty much everything right here. This is my uh, programming stuff, oh, basically. Wow. So uh, my laptop for programming, and this is my main J box that I use. And then I have my laptop all set up. It's got like, it's kind of ridiculous. It's got like five sets of windows. Really? <laughs> you can't use like Honda with certain ones and you can't have land rover and ford together really because they're they're all, they're all very similar for their factory software uh -huh. it's because bosch makes them all oh okay and so like ids is ford and then h ids is honda and then yeah huh. um, you had uh jaguar land rover that used the same type of system for a while so huh. you just had to have them all separate so i have a, like a domestic and an asian and a european huh. and then this is my icom this is for BMW. That's the factory head unit so that you huh. can use it with ISTA. Um, got a VCDS. This is uh, for uh, Volkswagen Audi. Group. Oh, okay. Um, it's not their factory software, but it, it, their diagnostic capability on it is just amazing. Oh, really? These are my, for my cloning. This is for cloning mo used modules. Okay. Like Global A GM modules that they say are not usable uh, used. Uh huh. This will clone a used one. Oh wow! So you'll hook it up to the original, and even if the original doesn't work, that's what I was gonna ask. Like sometimes would... this will still read. Huh? Yeah, this one will do that. It'll do Ford BCMs, uh, GM electric power steering racks, just some miscellaneous engine computers, just stuff like that. Um, and then the Hexprog will do a lot of engine computers too. Huh? Uh, you do have to be careful though. Um, if you adapt some used stuff wrong, if they go to the to a factory place and they stick it in the factory unit, it'll brick the computer. Oh no! So That'd when you're terrible. cloning, <laughs> be courteous to the next person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Oh, yeah. So do you ever do anything with like Tesla? Um, yeah. Even? So actually, getting down here, I have some Tesla stuff. Uh, I have Tesla cables for my Ultra. Oh okay. Um, I have used Toolbox. Toolbox is kind of pricey. Um, it's like three sixty a month, I think. Oh wow! Uh, but you can get you can get Toolbox, which is the factory software. Huh. Um, right now, service information is free. Really? Uh, so if you go onto Tesla, create an account, and you can get all the service information. So if you need to know how to take your door panel apart, stuff like oh, that. Right. I don't know how long it's going to be that way, right. <laughs> but they decided to let you do that, which yeah. is cool. So. Huh. A lot of the problems that break are like the door handles. It's nice to be able to take door handle apart and replace it yeah. without having to go to Tesla and, or wait two or three months. Sure, you know? yeah. So that's the biggest complaint we get is that 
oh, hey, my window doesn't roll up or down. Uh -huh. And it's like, yeah, my appointment for Tesla is like two, three months out. Oh, it's man. like, well, we can fix it today. Wow. So, um, and we can order parts for Teslas. Like there's a whole procedure. Uh -huh. We went through and signed up as a dealer to have Tesla parts. So oh, no we get them the same way. Um, unfortunately, it's not any cheaper. We don't uh -huh. get a discount, which sucks. Yeah, we so, can get, get in the door faster. Though. That's but we do get them. Yeah, we can help you out a lot faster. Um, this is my breakout box. So I use this for diagnosing CAN network problems or when I need to talk to a module that's not in the car. It comes with a little 12 volt hookup so I can put it in there. Cool. And then I can, it can turn on basically like this will power on the unit and then this is battery power and ignition power. Oh, so nice. I can either use that guy or this big wiring set I bought and uh, hook up the module on the bench and wow. then I can talk to the module on the bench. Huh. So that's how I do some like on bench programming uh, or if I need to do keys and I need to talk to the module outside of the car. Cause I'll, a lot of times I do, I do it for other places uh -huh. um, and they'll just bring me two modules. Oh, okay. So I don't have the car here. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So I will just do that on the bench right here, oh. basically on my toolbox yeah. and I'll read the modules, clone them, they come back up. And because when you clone it, it's plug and play, they just go back and plug it in. Oh, wow. And I don't have to be there. So. Yeah. But this is all, now this is all key programming stuff okay. going forward. And then this is a uh, bypass cable. So if you don't want to pay for secure gateway access, uh -huh. um, you go to the secure gateway module on the Chrysler, unplug it and plug it in here. And then you could talk to the network without it. Oh, so you're just go like literally just yeah. going right past it. Huh. I had to do it the other day uh, because Snap-on doesn't support Maserati. Uh -huh. And I was waiting for my update for this guy. I had to put this in to the, to do the oil reset. Just the oil reset. Oh, yeah. man. Because you couldn't clear it. You can't do anything. They won't wow. let you do anything. That's crazy. So up underneath the dashboard of the Maserati is the module. Uh -huh. I pulled down the plugs, plugged this in, huh. cleared the code. This guy is a simulator for a key. So for a new like push button car, like a Toyota uh -huh. is mostly what you use this for. When all keys are lost, this will, you plug that in, it will figure out what the key code is. Okay. And then this will simulate a key and you can start the car. And then once that's happening, then you can program keys because what? now this is it, the master key. How long does that take to like find the key? Um, two or three minutes. That seems dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <Really> so, <laughs> uh, there is a concern about that. Uh -huh. um, I have a, what's called an LSID, so a locksmith license. Oh, okay. Um, well, they changed the name of it. It's called a VSP now. It's a ve vehicle security professional. Huh. You can be dangerous. That, that little tool will do it. Really? In fact, um, there was a video they did on the news with this exact tool. No way. Um, where they basically walked by somebody and it read the key code. No way. And then they went out and started the car. Holy cow. So it is an issue. Um, that's why you have to have, go to a trusted shop or gotcha. professional. There's easier ways to steal a car than buy the software. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Cause like this whole setup is expensive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. So this is not the way they're going to do it. Right. Yeah. This is just a way for us to make keys profitable without having to pay the manufacturer. Oh, okay. So oh, that's interesting. And then this is uh, kind of similar to this guy, um, but it actually has some processing power in it. And oh. this is this is for breaking passwords on like Mercedes uh, Benz and BMWs. Um, this will power up the module, and then it does some of the math calculations in there because um, they kind of like brute force the the modules to get key codes oh, no and way. stuff. Huh. So that's kind of that. And then this is more, all of this is more key stuff. So we'll pull this out here. So this is the programmer um, and it does several different things. So you can read individual chips on this. Okay. Uh, this is for infrared keys. So this is for like Mercedes Benz uh, up to 2014. Infrared keys? Yeah. So oh, wow. Mercedes used infrared. Huh keys um the ones that you had to stick in the dash and turn oh but they're like they didn't look like a key yeah they just look, look like a, a okay uh, chrysler used them for a while that's where gotcha. they got that from okay um the, that's that um this is just for programming chips and then this is for the whole keys you stick the key in there and then that'll program the key wow. um that's mostly for european cars um 
Other car manufacturers, just by sticking the key in, it reads the chip number. Uh, okay. Um, Europeans tend to code the key with the VIN information. Okay. And so that's where that other kit has to come in because that VIN is coded on the key side. So sometimes you have to take the key apart, solder to it, to erase the VIN on that side. Wow. To reuse the key. Huh. So that's, this is the programmer. It reads chips too. Uh, so for reading EEPROM chips. Okay. Um, that's what all these adapters are for. Um, these are for these are for OBD adapters, but these are for like soldering onto boards. Um, this is for reading chips on the board. You just like spread it open and uh, clips on there. Huh. Um, and then there's all of these where like I'll have to desolder a chip. And I don't know how well it shows it. Let me pull it out so you can see it. So this will be to desolder a, a, a microprocessor. Okay. And then you'll solder it onto those pads. Okay. And then you'll stick this right there. See all those teeth? Yeah. There'll be a different adapters to stick it on to that, to read the chip. That's, how do you solder all the little? Well, hotter. So that's what the hot air station's for. Oh. So uh, kind of like uh, how they do cell phone repairs. Uh-huh. Uh, it, instead of using a soldering iron, it uses like superheated air to like seven, 800 degree air. Wow. And then that melts the solder. Huh. Interesting. So, and then there's some other things that you can do. Like if you need to like mix in chip quick with like a soldering iron first to like lower the melting point. Oh, okay. You can do that. And then the last door, wireless chassis ear and nice. then uh obd1 connections oh okay so cool. this one has obd1 connections oh no way so i can read older cars Sweet, yeah and then this is the this is kind of cool this is just a wireless chassis here so oh, yeah it looks brand new yeah it is actually <laughs> so we ordered it because we were having problems finding the noise and we ended up fixing it before it came oh really but but yeah so you'll you'll plug these on and I'm actually working on getting some adapters. I probably won't even use this. Um, they have some adapters to use the, the, the microphones uh -huh. for the scope. Oh, no uh, way. So you can actually scope the uh, noise. These are the little boxes. Uh -huh. You'll clip them on to the uh, different parts of the car. And then these are the little vibration mics. Nice. So you plug this in and say you think that your noise is coming from the controller. Mm -hmm. You just plug, you hook this on, zip tie this to the car, go for a drive, and you can hear the noise through the. Nice. Door. So, and that's it. You have like a massive, massive setup here. Like that is, that is awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. I yeah. I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day. Of course. To, to meet up with me. Oh gosh. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was really cool. I've never. He has so many tools I've never seen before, but. Uh, yeah, till the next one. We'll see ya.